This is the third part in a short tutorial series in which I show you how to make mixed reality experiences for the MetaQuest 3 using the Unity game engine. In the previous part, I introduced you to a mixed reality feature called Plane Detection. Specifically, we looked at how the Quest scans your physical environment and how it builds a room model from this. We discovered that the room model contains plane data that defines flat surfaces such as the walls, floor or items of furniture. We began to explore how to visualize these planes. In addition, we also set up touch controller input and tracking. This video assumes that you have completed the previous tutorials in this series. If you have not, then please do so before continuing. You can find a link to the tutorial series playlist in the description. In this tutorial, we will be taking a more in-depth look at plane visualization. Specifically, we will be focusing on the color-coded plane prefab that we downloaded in the previous video. I will explain how each of its components contribute to the plane's visual effect. Armed with this knowledge, you'll be able to craft your own custom plane prefab, tailored to your own visual style. I'll also show you how to set up one of the touch controller buttons, so that you can toggle the plane visualization on and off within your app. OK, let's continue from where we left off in the last video. Open the Unity scene that we were working on previously. During this tutorial, we are going to be doing a little scripting. The code is going to be very simple and straightforward. Nevertheless, it will be helpful to print messages to a debug console running inside of our app. This will help us check that our app is working as expected. For this reason, I have prepared a simple in-game debug panel asset that you can import into your Unity project. This asset is available on my GitHub page. Open a web browser and go to this URL. Link in the description. Now, click on the latest release. Then click on unitydebugpanel.zip. The zip file should download to your PC. Go to your downloads folder and extract the zip. Open the extracted folder and you will see that it contains a Unity package called debug panel. We are going to import this package into Unity, so let's return to the editor. Go to the top menu bar and select Assets, Import Package, and then Custom Package. Find the Debug Panel Unity Package and click Open. The Import Unity Package window will appear. Click the Import button. Once the package has finished importing, you should see a new folder called Ludic Worlds under Project Assets. Expand this folder, then select the Debug Panel folder. Inside, you will see the Debug Panel Prefab. Drag this prefab into the scene hierarchy. I'm just going to adjust the debug panel's position in the scene so that we can easily see it when the app is running. OK, now that we have that in place, let's turn our attention back to the plane visualizer that we set up in the previous tutorial. Go back to the hierarchy view and select XR Origin. In the inspector, take a look at the AR Plane Manager component. You should see the AR Plane Colored Prefab occupying the Plane Prefab slot. We want to take a closer look at this prefab, so let's double-click it to open it up. We can see that the AR Plane Colored Prefab consists of one empty game object, with a number of components attached. We will take a look at each of these components and see what role they play in creating the plane's visual effect. The first component is the AR Plane. This represents a single plane retrieved from the Quest spatial map i.e. the room model. It contains data such as the plane's boundary and normal vector. The second component is the AR Plane Mesh Visualizer. This component generates a mesh from the vertices found in AR Plane to visually represent the plane. This mesh is then used by the Mesh Filter and Mesh Collider. It also updates the Line Renderer with boundary points. The next component is a Mesh Collider. This is simply required for collision detection, enabling physics interactions with the plane. Following this, we have a mesh filter component. This holds a reference to the mesh that will be rendered. The mesh filter works in conjunction with our next component, the mesh renderer, providing it with the necessary mesh data to render the plane's surface. As with any renderer, it requires a reference to at least one material in order to render the object. For this plane prefab, I have created a material called Plane Colored Material. Let's take a quick look at it. Double click the material reference in the mesh renderer. The material is very simple. It uses the Universal Render Pipeline's Unlit shader. 
The surface type is set to transparent. The base color is set to white with an alpha that makes it semi-transparent. The material's color isn't too important, however, as it will be changed later in a script that sets the plane's color depending on its type. But we will get to that later. Right now, let's return to the AR plane colored prefab. Go back to the inspector. Now scroll down until you find our next component, the line renderer. This is pretty self-explanatory. In this instance, it is used to draw a pink outline along each plane's edges. This helps each individual plane stand out a bit more in our plane visualization. Now let's scroll down to the bottom of the inspector. Here you will find our final component, a custom script called AR Plane Colorizer. Double-click it to open the script in Visual Studio or Alternative Code Editor. OK, let me briefly explain what this code does. First of all, when creating a script that uses AR Foundation's Plane Detection API, you will want to include these using statements. The first thing that this code does is get references to both the AR Plane and Mesh Renderer components. Next, within the Start function, the main part of the script is carried out by running the update plane color method. Let's take a look at this method and see what it does. Each plane that is present within the quest's room model is given a specific label or classification. Looking at the update plane color method, you can see that the plane's material is assigned a color according to this classification. For instance, a floor plane is colored green, whereas a table plane is colored yellow. It is important to note the following, however. Meta's native plane classification labels are not identical to AR Foundation's labels, nor do they map across one-to-one. -one. You will notice that currently, AR Foundation has no plane classifications for screen, lamp, plant, storage, or bed. Hopefully this will be rectified in future versions of AR Foundation. Okay, that about covers the AR plane colored prefab. Let's go back to our scene. So now that you know how a plane prefab works, what if you wanted to create your own one from scratch? Well, Unity provides a way to quickly set up a basic plane prefab template. Simply, go to the scene hierarchy and right-click an empty area to bring up the context menu. From the menu, select XR and then AR default plane. An AR default plane will be created in your scene hierarchy. Now, with the AR default plane selected, take a look at the inspector. You will notice that the AR default plane has all the necessary components attached for it to function as a valid plane prefab. When looking at our previous AR plane colored prefab, the only additional component was the custom AR plane colorizer script. Anyway, one thing to be aware of with the AR default plane is that its default material is not compatible with the universal render pipeline. You'll probably want to create your own materials for your custom plane prefabs. For simple visualizations, I recommend using the Universal Render Pipeline's Unlit Shader. I'd also recommend setting the material to semi-transparent so that you can still see the real world when the plane visualization is turned on. I'm just renaming my newly created Unlit material here. I'm selecting the AR Default Plane object. And finally, I'm dragging the material onto the Mesh Renderer component of AR Default Plane. AR default plane currently exists as a simple game object in the scene hierarchy. We need to convert it into a prefab, however. To do this, I'm going to drag it into the prefabs folder in the project panel. I can now delete AR default plane from the scene hierarchy. We now have a new plane prefab that we could use for our plane visualization by adding it to our AR plane manager. We are going to leave things as they are, however. I want to move on and show you how we can configure a touch controller button to toggle the plane visualization on and off. With the XR origin selected, go to the inspector and find the Input Action Manager component. Under Action Assets, double-click XR Default Input Actions. This will open these action settings in the Input Actions window. We are going to bind a toggle planes action to the A button on the right-hand touch controller. In the Input Actions window, go to the Action Maps list and select XR right hand interaction. A set of actions belonging to this action map will appear in the actions list. Right click in the empty space beneath this list and from the context menu select Add Action. Rename the new action to Toggle Planes. Make sure the action is expanded. 
Directly beneath it, there should be an empty binding slot. It currently says, no binding. Select it. Head over to the binding properties panel on the right. Directly below binding, there is a path field with a drop-down menu. Click on it. From the drop-down, select XR controller and then Oculus Touch Controller. Scroll up and select the right-hand Oculus Touch Controller. Finally, select the primary button. The primary button maps to the A button on the Touch Controller. You may also want to tick the Generic XR Controller checkbox. This tells Unity to use this action binding for any XR controller that matches the general input criteria, regardless of the specific make or model. Essentially, it makes the action compatible with a wide range of XR devices. Anyway, we now have our A button bound to a toggle planes action. We are finished here. Go to the top of the window and hit the Save Asset button. Incidentally, you can also click the Auto Save button if you want. Close the Input Actions window. We are now going to write a C-sharp script to switch the plane visualization on and off. Go to the Project panel and under Assets, find or create the Scripts folder. Select this folder. Now, right-click inside the folder content area to bring up the context menu. From the menu select Create and then C-sharp script. Name the script Scene Controller. This script requires access to the AR Plane Manager component which is located on the XR origin. Select the XR origin in the scene hierarchy. Now, drag your scene controller script onto the inspector underneath the AR plane manager. Double click the scene controller script to open it in a code editor. Okay, so let's get coding. We are going to be using Unity's input system as well as AR foundation. Therefore, the first thing we will do is add the relevant using statements. Now, Let's add an input action reference. We will call it toggle planes action. To make this editable within the inspector, we'll precede it with the serialize field attribute. Indeed, later on, we will use the inspector to link our recently created toggle planes action to this variable. Next, let's add a variable to hold a reference to the AR plane manager component. As I'm sure you are aware, this component is already attached to the XR origin. Nevertheless, we have added a require component attribute to ensure that the AR plane manager is present. Next, we want a variable to track whether our planes are visible or not. Also, I've added a variable to count the number of times that new planes have been detected during the app's execution. OK, let's go to our start function and initialize a few things. We are using the get component function here to get a reference to the AR plane manager, which resides on the same game object as this script. In the next couple of lines, we subscribe to two events. I've also added empty event handlers for these events. We will fill those in shortly. Let's take a look at the first of these events. This is triggered whenever the toggle planes action is performed. If you remember, the toggle planes action is bound to the A button on the right-hand controller. Hence, this event should fire whenever this button is pressed. Let's now head over to the corresponding event handler and define what happens when the event fires. The event handler is called on toggle planes action. Let's add some code to it. The purpose of this code is to switch the plane rendering on or off each time it is executed. It's all pretty straightforward. The first line toggles the is visible boolean value between true and false. Next are a couple of floats that use is visible to set alpha values for both the mesh and line materials. Essentially, these floats will be used to set whether the planes are to be semi-transparent or completely invisible. Next, we have a for-each loop that iterates through each plane that the AR plane manager holds in its trackables list. In this context, trackables specifically refer to planes. The AR plane manager retrieves all of the planes contained in the quest's room model and then makes them accessible through the trackables list. And now we come to the core part of this script, we need a function to assign an alpha value to the materials on each plane based on whether our planes are to be visible or not. This is what the setPlaneAlpha function will perform. Let's implement it now. The setPlaneAlpha method receives a reference to the current plane, followed by the requested alpha value for both the plane's fill color and the line color. The first couple of lines of this method get references to both the mesh renderer and line renderer components of the plane. Next, we use the mesh renderer component to gain access to the plane's main material. 
We then assign the new fill alpha value to this material's color. Finally, we do a similar thing with the line renderer. Only here we need to assign our new line alpha value to both the start and end color of the line. OK, we've finished implementing the code for toggling our plane visualization on and off. Let's go back to the start function. Let's take a look at the planes changed event. This event is exposed by the AR plane manager, and hence it is part of the AR Foundation API. It is important to note that AR Foundation was originally created as a unified API to provide a common interface for creating mobile AR applications on both iOS and Android devices. As such, it integrates both Apple's AR Kit and Google's AR Core. Mobile phone apps typically generate planes dynamically, as a continuous process while the app is running. Therefore, planes may be regularly added or removed. When AR Foundation is used with the MetaQuest, however, it retrieves a complete set of planes from the Quest's room model, which is far more static. These planes are more or less persistent while the Quest app is running. Anyway, this is just something to keep in mind while developing for the Quest. Let's get back to the planes changed event. I want to use this event to run some code when the AR plane manager first receives the plane data from the Quest's room model. I'm going to add this code to the event handler called onPlanesChanged. Let's scroll down and find it. I want to print some debug information about our planes to our in-game debug panel. I'm adding this code to the onPlanesChanged event handler. I only want to continue with the function if some planes have been added. So I check for this in the first line. Next, we simply iterate through each plane and print some debug information about each one, including its classification label. OK, we are almost done with this script. There's just one bit of housekeeping that we need to do. We need to add the onDestroy method. This is automatically called just before the game object, to which this script is attached, is destroyed. In the onDestroy method, we will unsubscribe from any events that we are currently subscribed to. These include both the toggle planes action and planes changed events. OK, we are finished here. Save your script and then return to the Unity editor. The last thing we need to do to get everything working is to hook up the toggle planes action to our scene controller script. Let's do that now. With XR Origin selected, go to the inspector and take a look at the scene controller script. Notice the target icon to the right of the toggle planes action field. Click on it. You will be presented with a list of available input actions. Find the toggle planes action that we previously created for the right hand controller. Double click to select it. OK. We are all set. Make sure your scene is saved. Then go ahead and build the app. And here's what your app should look like. You should see the debug panel, which should be displaying debug messages. This should include a list of all the planes stored in the Quest's spatial data, or room model. The plane visualization should also switch on and off when you press the A button on the right hand controller. Alright, so that brings us to the end of this tutorial. In the next episode, we will continue to explore the mixed reality features on the Quest. This will include setting up physics interactions with our planes. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye and happy questing.